autumn in England is fresh and crisp. The world is a palette of sumptuous yellows and orange and brown. Today I'm drawing and painting a sunflower, step by step, so that you can do it too. I'm filling a page in my arty junk journal using brush pens and watercolour paints. And if you have a passion for paper and for journaling, then hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I have lots of relaxing videos to come. And these are the pens that I'm using today. I have a mix of brush pens and fine liners. And I'm using these alongside this gorgeous watercolour palette. So we're going to have some fun with a few different supplies and I'll tell you exactly which colours and shades as I use them. I want the sunflower head to be as easy as possible to draw and paint so I begin by drawing a couple of circles. I need an outer circle that's about three times the diameter of the inner circle and again I make life really easy by drawing some dots for the circumference of that outer circle and joining them up. The circle doesn't need to be perfect, it just gives us an outline for drawing our petals. And I'm going straight in to draw those petals with a pen and today I'm using an Arteza Inconic pen in the shade A182. And the way that I do this, and you may have your own method, is to start with four petals at the points of the compass. Then I move on to drawing petals that just took a little bit behind. Sometimes I draw another full petal, but I'm really just mixing it up. Some of them are pointy, some of them are not. Just vary it up a little bit. I'm filling in the space between the four that we started with. And using that outer circle as a guide, as a limit to the size of the petal. And this gives us a flower head that's really going to come to life when we add colour to those petals. We can remove the pencil lines now, so I'm just taking those off. They come off really easily. And now I do some colouring with those real brush pens. And today I'm using three different shades on the petals and I'm going to blend them, which is what really gives a lovely effect. These are Arteza brush pens and I'm starting with the shade Lemon Yellow which also has a number on it here which is A105. I colour the petals that sit at the front with this beautiful shade of yellow and then I move on to a darker shade of yellow to colour the petals behind. So now I'm using Bumblebee Yellow which is numbered A128. You could use whatever supplies you had for this. You could use pencils, you could use paints. The idea is that you put a slightly darker colour on the petals that sit further back. And the third shade I'm using is Sunset Yellow, reference A156. I'm trying to get some contrast, so I try to avoid having the same colour petal next to each other. The magic really begins as we start to add some shading. Again, I'm using a brush pen in the shade Ginger, that's A178, and I'm just flicking out gently from the center. And I'm building up the depth on the flower using another shade of brown, and this one is Orange Rust, A169. Just work steadily around the flower, take your time, and enjoy it. We're just building up the layers and letting the pens do the work. But it's not too scientific, just have fun and relax as you're doing it. And a final touch of richness comes from the shade Wine Red, so that's A182. This shade has a lot of depth, a lot of pigment, so I'm being quite careful with the colour. Working my way around the flower, just using the tip of the pen. Now I'm going to work on the centre, 
So I'm switching to a black gel pen. So to draw the seeds in the centre, it's just a string of these little ends. I just work around the centre and then fill in the gap in the middle. And don't worry if it's a little bit wiggly, they don't have to be perfect. Again, using the water brush in wine red, I'm now colouring in the centre. I go back to the fine liner pen and I'm just adding a bit of definition, circling around that centre to really make the flower pop. And just adding a few final touches in the shade Orange Rust. I'll leave a link to the supplies I'm using today in the description box down below and there's also a discount code for 10% off Arteza products. This sunflower needs a stalk so I'm drawing one in pencil with a little bit of an arc. Just choosing a natural shade of green to use here and I've chosen the shade Crocodile Green which is A126. I'm drawing quite a sturdy stalk here to carry the weight of the flower head. And I'm using the same brush pen to add some really simple leaves. You could definitely do this with paint or with watercolour pencils, that would be a lot of fun. I'm enjoying sweeping the brush over the paper to get the shape of a leaf. I'd like to do some work on leaves, I'd like to have a go and a practice at drawing leaves, so maybe that's a video we could do another time. Let me know if you're interested. I'm using a fine liner pen again to add a little bit of detail for the eye and this is in the shade A164. I'm adding some veins to the stalk and to the leaves and this just stops the colour feeling so flat on the paper. Time to play with those watercolours, I love this part of the process. And using a basic water brush pen here, I'm just mixing up some green. I want it to feel quite lush and fresh, so I'm adding quite a bit of yellow. And because the pigment in these paints is quite strong, I do add quite a lot of water. I'm mirroring some of the browns and rusts in the flower in the grass at the base of the plant. I love these autumnal shades. Do you like the autumn or fall colours best or are you more of a summer person? And those of you who've been here before will know that I love to write in my journals. I love to put ink on the paper. So today I'm using a few lines from a poem that I've been wanting to use for ages. I think many of you will know it and it's by John Keats. Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness, close bosom friend of the maturing sun, conspiring with him how to load and bless, with fruit the vines that round the thatch eaves run. And although I'd like to claim I'm using this because I'm a literary person, it's actually a quote used by Hugh Grant in the first Bridget Jones film. Do any of you know it? I'm adding the Latin name of the plant, so that's Helianthus. And giving credit to John Keats at the top of the stalk. And now it's playtime guys, time to stick things on the page. I think the plant will go here on the left. You can see I've rounded the corner to be sympathetic to the lean of the flower. And today I want to share a joyous bundle of papers. I'm choosing from this pile to add as background papers and a tuck spot. I had great fun pulling from my stash and just look at these beautiful patterns, the warm deep browns and the golds and the yellow. A warm yellow ochre, a bit like the flower. Gentle vintage green, I think that's Anna Griffin. I've got some pages here from books with some cute scientific diagrams. 
a distressed brown pattern here. Some of these are spotty papers, which I really enjoy using. Maybe this 12 by 12 spotty paper. Let's see, let's just narrow it down. So I've reduced it to these few pieces. I'm using this spotty paper as background to cover up some of that white. So again, to make life easy, I'm just tearing off a piece. This will go in the middle with the flower still going on the left. This journal's really starting to fill up now. If you're interested in seeing how I made it, I do have a step-by-step -step video on that. I'm using my chunky stick of Prit glue to stick it down. And the paper that's covering the remaining white comes from an old book page. There's something about that scientific diagram that really works for me on this page. I think it's because it's just unexpected, so it's a contrast for the eye, it's a surprise. Do you use book pages in your journal spreads? And if so, what sort of styles and page types do you like to use? And there's definitely a note to self on this journal spread when I'm gluing the back of a piece of paper, make sure I glue to the edge. There, I've got it, it's stuck down nicely. Now it's time to build up the page with a pocket and some pieces of paper. I've added a border to the flower. So I'll stick that on the left, gluing it down really well. You can see that the size of paper I chose was to make it fit really neatly in the journal. I'm adding this three tier pocket. Again, I have a video to show you how to make that step by step. I actually think it's one of the easiest to make, but also one of the cutest. It has lots of pockets for adding things, like this handmade tag. It's made in a beautiful yellow ochre cardstock. The paper pieces on the front have just been edged using chalk and have added this swish of organza ribbon. And this tag goes neatly in this front pocket. I'm adding a few other patterns to the page here in tones of green and rusty brown. I'm making the world's simplest tuck spot just using little paper pieces and a stapler. And this allows me to add some other flashes of colour, like this little rusty brown spotty piece, a banner to journal on in green, and that leftover piece of book page. And with that sunflower as the focus point, I still think I've balanced the page. Time to add a bit of washi. Now, which one shall we choose? Loving all the golds. I think I'll choose this stripey. I'm thinking of filming a video on how I use my overhead camera equipment to put these videos together, so if you're interested in that, do let me know in a comment down below. And I'm just finishing off here with a little bit more writing. Believe in yourself. I hope you've enjoyed my sunflower spread today. If you have, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and I will see you in a week for some more journaling fun.